I would like to acknowledge the traditional owners, the Gadigal people of the Yoruba nation. I want to say thank you that our ancestors can sit together around this campfire spiritually joining hands with our people as the river people of this region and as the saltwater people of the northern part. My name is Mosby. I'm from the tribe Kulkalgal, island of Masig, which is situated in the central part of Torres Strait, Zenad case. For those of you who don't know where Masig is or Torres Strait, it's a group of islands where we're situated between the tip of Australia and Papua New Guinea. We're so remote, so we're you know, really out there. I'll give you a taste of the Torres Strait. There's five groups of islands, nations. There's the volcanic islands of the Eastern Torres Strait. Then there's the Coral Cay Islands of the Central Torres Strait. Near Western, you have the hilly islands, which they are connected to the Great Dividing Range. Then you go up further to the north, to the coast of Papua, there's low-lying islands um, of swamp, swampy islands. Now all of these islands makes, make us the Torres Strait people within the five groups. I am from the island of Masig and I am part of the Torres Strait 8. And this is our island and our home campaign. It's a, a privilege and a honor for the Binale to, to give us this opportunity to showcase what we have as indigenous people and what we're fighting for. We were fighting for over 60,000 years for survival and we still are, but it's just this fight is different. This fight where we're fighting for now is against climate change. And so our children can remain on our home for another 100 years. Now where we come from, the island where we call home is our mother. It's difficult for people to understand, but it's not for us. The island where we live on is our maternity ward. It looked after our mothers, which gave birth to our fathers, gave birth to our sons, and gave birth to our grandchildren. It's our hospital. When we're not well, our island cares for us. We go back to the forest, we go back into the bush and we collect traditional food, healing food, which heals us. Our island is our supermarket. It gives us food. We do gardening on our home land, our home ground. We walk out on the reef and the table is always full. We have shellfish, we have fish in the abundance. Our home is our library. It stores a lot of ancient wisdom and knowledge. It's our school. It teaches us how to preserve, how to look after, how to maintain what's around us. It's our science lab. We study it and it's life. The whole island is sacred to us because our ancestors are buried there. We fight for the survival of our future generation because for our generation to leave their home and be refugees in their own country, then they will be disconnected to something ancient. Their lineage will won't, it won't be the same anymore. They won't have a library to run to. They won't be the same saltwater islander, how we are living as saltwater islanders today. We're carvers, we carve a lot of things. And our legend is carved onto poles where we have great spiritual connection to our flora and fauna. We have a lot of totems which connects us to the, the birds in the skies. We have star constellation which connects us to 
our ancestors. We have wind which is, belongs to us, which connects us to that wind. We also connected to the plants. We have totems of our plants, which connects us to the, the environment which surrounds us. We are connected to the mammals and we are connected to the animals of the sea. For one islander to introduce himself to another Torres Strait Islander, he won't introduce himself as, hi, my name is Jesse Mosby, I'm from the island of York. He will I, introduce himself as, I am the son of the trade wind. The morning star is my star. I am connected to this beautiful plant which has protected me and my people through sickness and in health. I am connected to that hammerhead shark because it is where my grandfather goes when they pass on to the next realm. And I want my son to be a hammerhead as well. For one day he and my grandchildren will see me swimming in the water as a hammerhead protecting and looking after. We all have duty to care. And all as normal human beings, we always look and protect something for our children. Fighting a fight where our ancestors have fought for our survival today, through sicknesses, through wars, ancestral wars. This fight is totally different. The fight I'm talking about how they fought was a fight that they observed and they studied for over 60,000 years. This fight we're fighting now today is something new and it's called climate change. But yet we're on the first line in getting hit of mother's fury, mother's nature's fury. Walking on the beach with my children a few years back made me to join the Torres Strait Eight when we were walking and picking up my ancestors' remains like shells off the beach. It's not nothing normal to a family or any human beings to walk on the beach to pick up their family remains when you know that that lady you're picking up has gave birth to your great-great-grandmother, that you are connected to her by blood. And to walk with your children and picking up her remain hits you spiritually, mentally, and physically. I fight for the freedom of my children to remain on their home, that something and something will be done very soon, very quick, because I really don't want my children walking with my grandchildren picking up my remains in the future. That's why I am a part of the Torres Strait 8 and I'm fighting this for the future of my children and my grandchildren. To hold ceremonial poles of my people here, which has strong connection to us and knowing that as indigenous people, we identify our storylines through our ceremonial poles. That a lot of people could come and see these poles which will be displayed on your land. With great respect, once again, all the traditional owners of this area, as the Art, art craftsman on behalf of me and my son say thank you. These four poles has a strong tie to our people. These four poles is replicas talking about our former gods. They were shapeshifters. They were very powerful. This legend dates back over 60,000 years. So now on the poles, you will see that there will be octopus. There's an octopus, there's uh, the jumping ray. There's a tiger shark. 
and there's a hammerhead. These four gods, they came in those forms. When they reached the shores of our islands, we worshipped them. We worshipped them because they gave us the times and the seasons of when to hunt a particular fish and when to leave it. So everything, our life dated in seasons and we've monitored it in the skies up above the stars. There's a particular star constellation which we call a Zugubal. It moves on the four seasons the four seasons at those four se at the four seasons summer autumn winter spring eh? that star constellation sits dead on those time and when we monitor when we look at that star other certain stars pops up at those particular time when we know that this time now is the time where we do our planting of our sweet potatoes of our cassavas of our yams and at this particular time, we eat the mallet because at the, this particular time, the mallet is in the abundance. Then it stops at a particular time when the mallet now goes into spawning. We do not touch it. We touch another fish. That's how we were farming and looking after the animals. Now, all these way of living hasn't been taught yesterday. It was passed to us from generations upon generations upon generations to now and it's documented on these poles of our ancestral gods which gave us the gift of survival on a coral cay island for over 60,000 years that we call a sandbar island home through these four gods which gave us our rules and regulations where we still today abide by very strongly the only thing is confusing for us now we have LAW as well. So we're abiding by two different laws, the LORE and the LAW.